sharpen your sword, dust off your pan flute, we're about to fly into a world of fantasy in the land of far away. The land of far away. Also known as Mio in the land of far away. Also known as Mio, Min Mio, if you're living in Sweden, is a 1987 fantasy film based off of a children's book by Astrid Lindgren, known mostly for her novel Pippi Longstocking. This movie is your pretty typical hero-centric fantasy tale about a young, down-on-his-luck boy traveling to a faraway land, get it, to defeat an evil villain. Think never-ending story, but more disturbing. Actually, never-ending story is disturbing as hell. The land of far away is more unsettling. Now grab hold of my beard. But we'll get to that later. The movie takes place in Stockholm, Sweden, which you can just barely tell from the white on light blue text. Here we meet young Bossa, the hero of the story, who spends his time kiting. Say, look what we've got here. Getting bullied by these kids. Why don't you answer me? Getting bullied by his evil aunt and narrating the ever-living crap out of the story. Benke and I were going to try out his new kite. We stopped off first at the corner store to buy some crackers for Aunt Edna. Plain crackers, not the salty ones. Hi, Mrs. Linden. Hello, you two. Holy shit, is that Batman? I'm Batman. Hold on, let me check. Yep, that's Batman, all right. We mustn't be late. Okay, I'm ready, come. Apparently this was Christian Bale's first feature film and sweet Jesus, would you just look at that precious face? Anyway, Bossa tells us he's orphaned, that his mom died when he was born and his dad left him soon after. Now he's living in the care of his grumpy aunt and uncle. What's this? It wasn't my fault. Into the bathroom. Oh. It's basically Harry Potter, but without the annoying cousin. That boy is evil, Sixton. I know he is. It's hereditary. His father was a no good bum. My father is not a bum. He isn't, he isn't, he isn't. I'll find my father. After all that smack talk, Bossy gets fed up and sneaks out of the house and heads to the store. Hello, Bossa. I was expecting you. The shopkeeper, dressed in her finest puffy shirt from Seinfeld, invites in Bossa and gives him an apple and a chore. Would you mail this for me? Neat. But as you can tell from the lights being cranked up to 10 million magical watts, this shopkeeper has something special in store for Bossa. To the king of the land of far away. Much better. Okay, are we all seeing the same thing? You guys see a disembodied old man's head, right? I am the spirit from the land of far away. You are the one I have come to fetch. Now grab hold of my beard. Hold on tight. Oh, what is he doing? Oh, what's going on? Oh God. How can they be in space? Oh, what are they doing? What is that thing? What is that? Oh, what's that? Oh, I don't feel so good. Someone may get stopped. Please help me. 911, what's your emergency? I think, uh, I think I'm dying. Sir? I think I'm dead. Sir, are you watching The Land of Far Away? Please send rescue. Sir, are you at the part where the little kid flies through space holding an old man's beard? Please send rescue. So, after Bossa and Old Man River fly through the fucking vacuum of space, they reach their destination. Where are we? We've reached the land of far away. Where he's immediately greeted by his- No! Don't tell me! I already know! It's my father! Yes, your father. The king of the land of far away. So for Bossa's whole life, his dad has been absent because he was busy being a king in the land of far away. I sometimes wish that Banker's father was my father too. I think a lot about my real father. I've spent nine years looking for you, and I've missed you so. Look at how kingly he is. Look at that kingly smile. Hear his kingly words of wisdom that don't quite match up to his kingly mouth. You can do anything you want, as long as you have enough courage in your heart to do it. And wouldn't you know it? Welcome to Green Meadow Island. Banker's is here too. Banker. My name's Yum Yum. 
Yum Yum. Hi. Now his name is Yum Yum? I'm Bussa. Bussa? Now, of course. My name is Mio. And wait, now his name is Mio? All that about being called Bussa was wrong. I knew it. Everything's been put right now. And from now on, you're going to live with me in my castle on Green Meadow Island, in the land of far away. Question. Why do people who live in the land of far away call it the land of far away? Far away from what? Did you name your entire world in reference to Earth? Also, does this make Mio an alien? Whatever. Anyway, Mio and his alien friend Yum Yum hop on Mio's new horse and take a tour of Green Meadow Island, where the two stop in at a village and meet a bunch of little kids. What strange music. Please teach me how to play it. Sure. Here. These belong to my two brothers, but they will not be needing them anymore. <laughs> After the pan flute jam sesh, the kids also show Mio a magical well that specializes in giving away all the story's exposition. To summarize, there's an evil knight named Kato who lives in a place nearby called the Land Outside, who kidnaps children and either turns them into birds, doomed to fly in circles around his castle forever, or turns their hearts into stone, using them as evil servants to do his bidding. And wouldn't you know it, there's a whole mystical prophecy about a royal child who journeys on his white horse with his best pal in order to defeat the evil knight. Why me? Only a male child of royal blood can fight the evil knight. Only a king's son. Gee whiz, was his best friend named Batman too? Mio decides to follow his destiny and venture into the force of mystery, but checks with his long lost dad first. Would you rather I didn't go? Are you worried about me riding into the forest of mysteries at night? No. Why, should I be? Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe Mio just wants you to want him to stay. Do you want me to stay here with you instead? No, Mio. The forest of mysteries awaits you. I swear, this guy is the worst father of all time. Oh, and if you're thinking that the king resembles George W. Bush, you're not alone. Timothy Bottoms starred in a short-lived Comedy Central series called That's My Bush. Anyway, the dumbass king gives Mio the green light to go risk his life. You go now, Mio. So Mio and Yum Yum set out on their white horse to defeat the evil knight Kato. Along the way, the two encounter a bridge, cross a bridge by getting sick air on the horse, and stop off at a weaver woman's house, where she gives Mio a new cloak. And I give it to the one who will rescue my daughter. Eventually, the two reach their destination. Kato's castle. Oh, there it is. So the two sneak into the castle, and it takes about 20 seconds before they get captured. And for the first time, we get a good look at our dastardly villain. Kato. Welcome, Prince Mio. You know what's weird? Every time someone says Kato, the music swells or there's a gust of wind. Kato! Kato. Kato. Which I guess explains why some people try to avoid saying his name altogether. Kato. So Kato throws Mio and Yum Yum in jail to starve to death. All hope is lost until Mio discovers something about his cloak. Mio! Mio, where are you? Here. Where? Right next to you. I can't see you! Okay, let's review. We got an orphan boy being cared for by his aunt and uncle who are total dickbags. Bring my coffee, boy. Yes, Uncle Vernon. Who gets summoned by a giant bearded man. You're a wizard, Harry. To travel to a faraway place where he finds out he's the chosen one, uses an invisible cloak to destroy a villain whose name is- Please, don't mention that dreadful name. I guess that would explain J.K. Rowling's Astrid Lindgren tattoo on her bicep. <laughs> oh well. So Mio uses the cape to sneak out of the jail cell and get the jump on Kato. God, so smart. I bet he's gonna sneak up on Kato and stab him right through his- Face me, Kato! Your time has come! Nope. Mio instead gives up his advantage so he can have a drawn-out one-on-one showdown with Kato. Look at 
the acrobatics on Christopher Lee. You didn't get that with Saruman. Finally, Mio corners Kato, whose only recourse is to beg for Mio to spare his life. You have defeated me, Prince Mio. Let me live. Take your faithful little friend and your white horse and leave this place. Go home to your father. He is waiting for you. I came here to destroy you and I will. Then you must die. After Mio stabs Kato to death, the birds are turned back into children. And he, along with Yum Yum and the horse, escape from the castle. I guess all the castle guards just let everybody go. So, being a merciful prince, Mio spares the lives of the guards in the ca- oh, oh. Never mind, they're all dead now, I guess. Oh, and big shocker, Mio's dumb dad doesn't even show up to greet him at the end. Mio has to run all the way back to the castle to see him. Father! What is it you do all day, sir? You are the worst. You know, this movie could have been good. It has some goofy elements, but it's a fairy tale movie for kids, so it could have worked. Unfortunately, the movie's production wasn't all that great. Christopher Lee sums it up in this quote. As a work environment, it was a horror story. For us, the faraway land was the Soviet Union where the food was unedible, the sanitation unspeakable. Yeah, they filmed in the Soviet Union and in the Ukraine. They even had to evacuate a location because the Chernobyl disaster happened nearby. When they returned to the set, they had to use Geiger counters. But as far as watchability goes, I give this an eight out of 10. It's a weird gem. If you're into movies like The NeverEnding Story or Labyrinth, this is something that'll be up your alley. With all its flaws, The Land of Far Away's got charm. Go see it. <laughs>